Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents with me, your host, Valerie, and sometime co-host, Miss Purrington. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. You can keep up with us on Twitter and Instagram at Comedy Wham or on our Comedy Wham Facebook page. In addition to podcasts, Comedy Wham brings you articles, album reviews, our new column, Rochelle Takes on Comedy, and our monthly Comedy Wham showcase at Hops and Time in Lakeway on first Tuesdays. Have you checked out our events page for live shows in Austin, Houston, and DFW? If you're a comic in those cities and want your show featured on the calendar, go to the events page and click submit a show to complete the short survey. If you like the new survey, send us a quick review and we'll share your review and promo your show on Instagram. Looking for ways to support all these resources that we provide? You can donate to Comedy Wham on PayPal, Venmo, or even Patreon. Search for Comedy Wham on Patreon and check out our subscriber perks. Now let's get back to the podcast. Launched in 2016, the podcast project brings you funny people and their stories. As a fan, I like to delve into a comic's background and motivations, and we usually take a detour along the way. Consider the, the interview a way for you to get to know the folks that uh, shape the Austin comedy scene, even if they're just visiting for a night. And it's, uh, we think we have uh, one of the best scenes in the country. If you like this podcast, uh, please rate and review us. And as I catch my breath, <laughs> let me introduce our guest. Today, from LA by way of Canada and Chicago, she's trained with Second City, the Groundlings, and Upright Citizens Brigade. You've seen her at the Winnipeg Comedy Festival, New York Comedy Festival, and JFL. She is the star of Dating No Filter on the E! Network, and her feminist investigative comedy series, Kara Takes Up Space, is on Out TV. She's the creator of a 90 Day Fiancé impersonation series, and it's so good it even makes me want to watch the show. She is a master of impersonations. Shout out to her embarrassing mom chaperoning a school dance, something that hits a little too close to home. And in this fun fact, she is an Irish step dancer. She's in town for one night only for her Straight for Pay tour, stopping by the Fallout Theater on Saturday, February 26th. And now Comedy Wham presents our guest, Kara Connors. <laughs> Hi, Valerie. <laughs> we're, we're doing it. We're, we're doing we're it. Doing it. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, we, it's so inside baseball to talk about all of the audio connectivity mm -hmm. issues. <laughs> We yeah, got just to get to this five minutes into the podcast point. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a miracle, and I'm glad. I'm glad that we finally made it work between all of our twenty devices. We've got it <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kara, thank you so much for reaching out to us. Uh, yeah. I I I didn't know about you, and then as I was preparing, I'm like, mm -hmm. I love her. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had known about you sooner uh everything that I've watched of yours is so much fun it is like my so I have a teenager okay and uh I told him oh my god I'm so excited about this comic that I'm gonna get to uh get to interview and she's coming into town for for one night for one show mm -hmm. and I described you to him as a female version of Will Ferrell and Whoa, so nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know if you've ever been around teenage boys. <laughs> Couldn't care less. Just, oh my God. It's like, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, but I'm excited. And that's what counts. Yeah. That's all that counts. Like you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna probably get him to be excited. He's got to like kind of maintain the facade of cool. So. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my God. But I'll, uh, I'll take it. I thought teenage boys liked Will Ferrell, but maybe. Maybe yeah, not. maybe, maybe <laughs> mine is, mine's the exception, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, Kara, I, I have an official icebreaker question, and we'll use okay. that to kind of kick off the conversation. Perfect. And that is one word to describe your past. Whoa. Um, I'm going to say sassy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say sassy. I think that is the most all-encompassing uh, word to describe my life thus far. <laughs> well, 
you, uh, well, I'm not supposed to ask somebody their age. I mean, you're, you're so, to me, you're very young. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I think being sassy is, is important to success. <laughs> Anything. Yeah. I don't think I have a, I don't think I have a choice, but, um, yes, I have decided to lean into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what kind of comedic memories do you have growing up? Mm. Um, well, I definitely was watching Saturday Night Live and loved kind of the probably my favorite era was kind of the Molly Shannon and Sherry O'Terry and Will Ferrell and sort of that cast. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of I feel like in my family, there was a lot of like kind of silly like Jim Carrey humor was really big like Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber and just like I I definitely always liked humor with kind of egregiously idiotic people playing like really big characters so I think that that informed the whole kind of comedy in my house probably yeah yeah <laughs> and where did you grow up I grew up in Chicago okay can I yeah. ask what part of Chicago um, well, it's a little like on the northwest side, kind of okay. just on the yeah near near O'Hare, I guess. Okay, all right. Well, I yeah. I lived ten years in Chicago, so oh nice. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I I've lived everywhere from North and Clybourne back when mm -hmm. it was not you know the hoity-toity shopping area mm -hmm. uh, to Uptown to Beverly. So oh uh, nice, lots of yeah. areas. So uh, so when I lived in Chicago. Uh, one of the things that was like a, a frequent staple was going mm -hmm. to Second City. Yes, yes. I I didn't even I didn't even know there was stand up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. now that <laughs> right. I've been doing comedy, wham! I I obviously know that. But at the right. time, the only thing I knew existed comedy wise was mm -hmm. Second City. Yeah, that that was kind of the same for me. I mean, I. I left right after high school. So I never lived. I never had the experience of like being an adult in Chicago and like living properly in the city. But um, one of my cousins is uh, is like a second city ETC and main stager. And so I used to go in high school and I would take the bus down and see like before she made main stage when she was doing like shows in the basement at IO and I was in high school and I'd like come and see her. And yeah. like, I also only ever sought out second city shows which i still think is i mean a second city main stage show is kind of hard to beat in terms yeah. of it's just so funny and like um but yeah i also that was the that was all that revolved around the comedy universe in chicago as far as i thought too when i was yeah. growing up <laughs> yeah so when you left chicago was mm. it because you were already settled into you're going to be a performer were you a performer in school no, I mean, growing up, I was much more of a uh, like a sports sports oriented person. Ah. So I was like never doing kind of any official theater or things like that. But I was always definitely being a loud mouth and getting in trouble and trying to make people laugh. But that was more just my disposition and less like a kind of a direct pursuit. But I didn't start doing comedy until... I, I never did it in Chicago and then I went to New York for college and I didn't do it there either, even though oh I like walk, I like had a job where I used to walk by the UCB every day oh, and wow. I just never. Yeah. So I didn't even end up doing it until I moved to Toronto and then weirdly started at Second City, but up there because uh -huh. I knew about it from Chicago. So I kind of took a bit of a, you know circular route to get there yeah. <laughs> and what was it that prompted you to walk in those doors and and mm. do those you started with classes I yeah I started okay. yeah the first thing I, I started I took a stand-up class I, I started because I was having such a miserable time in grad school and not enjoying it and I decided to do something that summer that I thought would be fun and kind of like erase sort of the misery that I was feeling and um as I was kind of just like trying to figure out what I wanted to do and then I took a class at Second City just like an intro to stand-up writing and I just immediately huh. loved it um and that's really how it all kind of started ah well, yeah uh, out of curiosity what were you studying at, uh, at teaching ah okay yeah yeah and I did not uh I did not enjoy it yeah to say the least <laughs> 
<laughs> it was not a fit. Um, yeah. yeah, but it worked. I mean, it worked out for those reasons, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. So you fell hook, line, and sinker into into this immediately. Yeah. yeah. I just immediately loved it. And like, that was, but that was really like the only reference point I had was like, oh, I always loved Second City growing up and remembering going to my cousin's shows. And then I just like saw that they had one in Toronto and looked at it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'd always been an avid fan of comedy, but never like, just never thought of it in any way in any like professional capacity until that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and then how do you go from you're taking the classes to mm. you you quit i don't know if you did but i'm just saying mm. like if you you quit grad school you just right. reoriented your entire life because you found the thing right right well i did i i didn't quit grad school although i definitely wanted to um <laughs> but i i finished it out um I had kind of a long summer break. Like my summer break was like four months long. And basically by the time the school year came around again, I was like, I do not even want to go back, but I ended up going back and finishing and totally phoning it in and not really caring at all. And then I ended up getting the exact same grades that I got the first year when I was <laughs> killing myself. So I was like, okay, that's good to know. Um, but I don't know. I just got completely obsessed. And like, as soon as I, I took that class and then I just, I had no, I mean, everything I've learned like in comedy has been very much trial by fire. I had no idea how anything worked or what you did. And so I just like started going to horrible open mics, just the worst, most depressing, like actual terrifying open mics, but just did that in like started a little google doc note my first year and like i wrote down every single time i got on stage and i tried to go on stage like 500 times my first year or something like that did you yeah. do it did you yeah actually? i did wow yeah oh yeah i just was obsessed i just loved it and i was like okay i know what i want to do so now how do i do it how do i get good at it and not suck and i just knew that there was just going to be uh, a lot of reps to just get up there and yeah. figure out what the hell I was doing, yeah. which I'm still doing, you know, I think that's it, an ongoing process. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Did you stick? So second city is well known, at least the Chicago mm -hmm. for the improv element, right. you, you specifically said you signed up for the stand up class. Right. Did you migrate into the improv as yeah. well? Okay. Yeah. I start, I just did like the first stand up class and then I kind of, became very fixated on that and, and was doing all of the mics and everything and realized that I didn't really need to be in like a structured class to go and bomb in front of three people in like a weird diner on a Tuesday that I didn't need to pay second city to help me do that. But yeah. I did go through their, like end up going through their whole program and did their whole like improv and conservatory, which I also loved because I love doing characters and I love sketch stuff. So I, I'm, I would say at my core, like I'm more of a stand up in terms of how I would identify, but I am one of those weird hybrid beasts that is also kind of ingrained in the sketch side of things as well. Yeah. 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 You, you seem like you're, you are capable of doing it all between what I was watching of yours. Mm. You know, I, I watched the the clips of the uh, no filter dating. Well, what is it mm -hmm. right? I got to get this right. Dating no filter. Right. And, yeah. You know, you seem like a very comfortable hostess slash actress mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. your character work. I guess <laughs> I have to give a shout out to like, if people don't realize just how meta it is that you do a Mel Melissa Villa Senor impersonation because yeah. she is yeah. a master impersonator herself. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. I love, I love her so much. And I, <laughs> I'm like, I've been a fan of her for a while and I like had been working on this impression of her, which was meant to be complimentary, honestly. Uh -huh. Like it, it is one of those, like most of the people I impersonate, I do actually, well, that's not true. Most of the like celebrities that I impersonate, I like in some form usually. <laughs> and then like, but I love Melissa Villasenor and I thought she would like, like it or get it because yeah, like she's done the same thing, but I will say she did see it. She saw the story. Like I saw that she viewed the story, but no, like no comment. Oh. I'm like, come on. Like you get it. Like you like, d don't, you know, when she was coming up, like if she was doing an, you know, and one yeah. of the comedians 
impersonated would have just given her a little like that would have meant so much yeah. but I try to oh, you know wow. maybe whatever but I'm like Melissa I'm gonna just keep doing it until you give me some acknowledgement and we become friends <laughs> I refuse to stop. <laughs> well, um, let's let, let's go back to Kara. So, uh, <laughs> when when did you start the like the full picture where you're adding in, uh, you're you're kind of mixing things together, not just a stand up comic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, from like from the very start, I kind of okay. just like wanted to do anything to do with comedy. So mm -hmm. I think I just like still kind of have this process of like sometimes I'll have a funny idea and I'm like okay is this a stand-up bit or is this an impersonation wow. of someone and they don't oh like I used to do a lot more impressions or parodies or like talk about shows on stage and I just felt like I wasn't getting the reactions that I wanted versus like posting it online then I could hypothetically people that already like that show then would watch it and get it versus like talking about 90 day fiance on stage in a stand-up set a lot of people might not know what the hell it is versus if someone online already likes the show yeah um but i always just like mixing everything because i just want to make things that are fun for me to do so i'm not gonna like limit myself to one specific sort of thing sure that's yeah good. that's good yeah <laughs> Was the Groundlings and the UCB something mm. that you did while you were still in Canada or did you come back to the States for those? Um, yeah, I came back. Um, I, I started comedy in Toronto and was there for about three years. And then I decided to move to L.A. Um, and then that's where I started doing UCB and Groundlings. And I, I kind of did it um, like when I did kind of a scouting trip to LA and then I, once I moved there permanently as well, and then I kind of finished it up this year. Um, but yeah, I was, I was definitely excited. Groundlings. I was the most excited about because when I saw their main stage show the first time, that was kind of how I felt like when I first saw second city main stage shows, I was like, wow. Oh, this is really good and really, really odd and specific. And I like that. Yeah. <laughs> What was your specific uh, mission with going to LA? Because I think for mm. for performers that move to LA, a lot of times I feel like it's very specific to I'm going to get acting or writing mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. jobs. And was it was it the case for you? Um, I think that I chose LA because yeah, I I think that I have a lot like most of the things that I've done, I guess, up to this point have always kind of been a lot of things that I've made uh, on my own and like my own show doing a bunch of characters or my own sort of thing. And so I think I felt like there was maybe more potential to do things in LA versus New York. I think I felt like I would be too much just on the stand up track, maybe initially. Um, but also I lived in New York when I was in college and it's a very miserable place to live when you're not really wealthy. So uh, I was in no rush to go and be like grinding it out, doing comedy for however many years until you get to the point where you can like live more comfortably. I was like, I think I'd rather do that on the beach and where it's 75 degrees. And I'd always want to live in California too. Yeah. Um, so I think it was kind of based on that. I, I do love New York and I would definitely live there again, but I would only live there with some serious money because it's otherwise it's actually so miserable <laughs> in my opinion. Maybe some people like it. I don't personally like living like a sewer rat constantly. And that's how I felt when I was there. So yeah, yeah it was I, a I, lifestyle I, decision too. <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you landed the e-show Mm. um okay have to keep the, that hashtag i know they put off. it in the wrong place i don't know they should have named the show sorry i mean you can you don't have to cut this out they should have named the show hashtag dating no filter but instead <laughs> they named it dating hashtag no filter and then it's like when you do actually hashtag it it's like not connected to the i don't know <laughs> oh yeah 
it's, it's confusing. Very, it's very confusing, but you did it. Yeah. You did it. I get <laughs> it. I know what you're talking about. Yes. The show, no. whatever it's called on E. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would imagine that mm-hmm. when you're landing a show on mm-hmm. E that you have gone through like so much audition process to right. land that show. Did you feel and I know the I know the real answer to do you ever feel comfortable with the audition process? It's kind of like, are you yeah. ever, you know, are you ever done learning how to be a stand-up right. comic? You're never right. fully comfortable. But yeah, did, did you feel like you were in a groove of, of auditioning for for projects when you when you went through that one? No, not at all. <laughs> I not at all. And and it was actually this is like the story of how I got that show is uh I almost kind of feel like it's like a it's like a special story to me and my Mm -hmm. like close friends who like love and care about me. But it's like when I tell it publicly, it's one of those stories that probably makes people want to like punch me in the face because I did get like lucky in the sense because I um, I previously to auditioning for that when I was in Canada, the most like I was doing a lot of commercials and that was was actually my kind of success that I was having and doing a lot of commercials and like uh had never had a tv or film agent in Toronto and like had never auditioned for really anything beyond that and um the dating no filter thing was just kind of like an alignment with the universe because um I uh had had like one general meeting or two general meetings with like the different people involved in that show. And then I had actually gotten, like I had just moved to LA, um, just like found an apartment two weeks earlier and then was flying back to Canada to pick up my girlfriend and my dog and all our stuff and do the drive like out to LA properly. Uh And uh, I literally got the call about the audition. I just landed in Toronto, got the call. We need you to come back to LA and do this screen test tomorrow because they were just trying to fill the last seat they had already cast everybody else on the show so everyone else who ended up on the show had gone through like several rounds and they were just trying to like fill that so I just landed got on a plane went back to LA (sighs) did the screen test and honestly like didn't have much time to think about it like I didn't really know much I just they just kind of played a clip and I just talked about it and then the next day went back to Canada and then as I was driving across the country like got the call when I was in Arizona that like I booked the show wow. so it was very crazy like it was that was my first audition in LA wow <laughs> if, if they would only all be like that <laughs> I know what an yeah and then it was like wow you know what I think it's gonna be okay and then it's like the next three years just getting like slapped in the face constantly and like just rejected all the time so I definitely got like a weird introduction to it and I'm like huh it's not so bad out here <laughs> like <laughs> but yeah it all worked out yeah um, I, uh, I, I wasn't kidding when I uh when I was describing you as like a female Will Ferrell and I would love to see you all like on a big screen is that something yeah. that I'm just you know imposing my will here uh yeah no <laughs> um I definitely I mean I definitely my my dream which is not something that I um hide I my dream is to be on SNL that is like what I'm uh-huh. gunning for and like that is definitely um up there for me because I think it would be so fun to just obviously that's a lot of people's dream but yeah um but yeah I definitely uh would love to have the opportunity to just be very like a big 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 goofball weirdo and physical and like on yeah on tv yeah. in some comedic way um would be would be great for sure yeah <laughs> uh in the meantime you have to pay mm-hmm. your bills and right you- you're 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 gonna be uh well are you are you able so I know that the LA comedy scene is Mm. you know so spread out there's I've yeah I've looked at the because I'm we're comedy wham and we we have an events page I've looked at the comedy bureau's website Mm -hmm. there's no way that I'd be able to manage you know how many Mm. shows are are possible do you you kind right. of have your uh, I know you have your own show that mm-hmm. you're actually taking on tour but, right uh how 
are you able to to keep up with your stand up uh, mm-hmm. chops in in this big metropolis? Yeah, I mean it it is difficult because um, I definitely like came from a comedy scene that from what I've heard is more similar to Chicago or like in Austin or, you know, Toronto's comedy scene is amazing and robust. And I got, I had so many friends there and had all the stage time that I wanted and it was really amazing. And then I came out here and it's like, Oh, okay. I have maybe one show a week or maybe I have sometimes you don't have anything. And it's, it's definitely, been more challenging to get consistent stage time because the scene in LA is like there's a lot of kind of independent shows that are super independent and super random and like are especially in the last like two years with COVID are like in people's backyards or they're at like a random secret spot or whatever so there's that which is good and fine but it can be difficult to get booked on them because a lot of those shows are like they're a monthly or they're every other Tuesday, but then they only go for two months and then they get canceled or the owner doesn't want comedy anymore. And then they're trying to find a new home. So there's like, it's difficult to get spots. And then there's the other option is like the kind of traditional comedy clubs, which I've never really felt super um, drawn to. (laughs) So uh, there's like, I've performed at them a couple of times, but um, but I, I don't like necessarily feel like the most, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I just feel n- maybe not the most like creatively free or not the most just like energized by it. It feels a lot like putting people in their places and like making you sweat it out. And it's like, come sign up for this mic at two 30 and put your name in the hat. And then you might get on at eight o'clock for one minute. And it's just, it seemed like, um just like this whole system and I don't know and then I have other maybe like reasons that I don't like some of these clubs because I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the choices of who they're happily welcoming back and putting on their lineup and I'm like yeah I don't actually feel comfortable um so that was part of the reason that I started kind of my own uh monthly show because I really like having that like ability to kind of curate a lineup and I did that as like a weekly show in Toronto for a couple of years as well so yeah uh, that would be one of the major cons of the LA comedy scene is I do feel like it's very difficult to get kind of yeah. consistent stage time with your show are you it's but your show is monthly in mm-hmm. LA versus right. the weekly in in, in Toronto, Toronto yeah when you were there right um, which is also a different a different energy as well Mm -hmm. um but I think it was just kind of a thing that I wanted to do with COVID and I was like okay we it is warm here year round let me get something going and I um I do like kind of building like little little kind of niche shows or audiences and things like that but yeah I I think that's one of the main reasons where I'm like okay maybe I would go to New York just because if you're a comic in New York you can get on stage multiple times a night yeah um yeah. which there's not really much that can like replace that you know yeah yeah <laughs> and and your your show is now mm-hmm. what you're taking on tour right was going on tour something that you've always wanted to do or you thought oh i'm going to mm-hmm. mix things up because i'm you know this is the best way for me to kind of get mm-hmm. get <laughs> get in front of a lot of faces right yeah Um, it's definitely something that I've always wanted to do. Um, I did in like the, the monthly show that I run in LA is kind of like a lineup of just queer, mostly queer comedians in the city that I like, and I host it, but like the hour that I'm taking out on tour is just like my hour, basically just with the kind of same moniker. But, um, I wanted to go on tour. I did my first hour, like at the New York comedy festival, like a couple months before COVID. And at that point I was thinking about, okay, I want to take this hour out on the road and like record it as an album and do all these things. And then obviously everything was completely derailed and shut down for two years. Um, And then, yeah, I think I was just like, 
uh, started things back up with the monthly show and was just like had this hour and then over the last like six months kind of worked out a new half hour. And so now this hour on the road is kind of a, a hybrid of the two as I kind of like determine what what I want to be the final product, I guess. But um, I think I just got to the point where I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. What if we are living in some kind of version of this hellish reality indefinitely? Like I, I was just like, all right, I'm just going to go and, and do it and, and see what happens. Cause I felt like I got to the point where I knew that I could go out and do it on my own. And like, I, I never had a desire to go out on the road and like middle because then you have no power of like where you're going, what the audience is, like who sends you where they don't really care versus if I'm kind of creating the entire tour myself, then I can choose, okay, I want to go to these cities and I want to only work with like indie theaters that put on this type of show and that have this type of audience. So um, then it kind of like allowed me to have a lot more control in that way. Yeah. Um, So that's kind of why I like waited, I guess. Yeah. I was, I was going to ask you, how did you pick the venues? Cause the fallout Mm -hmm. is, it's one of my favorite uh, venues in in Austin because it's very uh, welcoming and Mm -hmm. it's, you know, small, smaller theater, but it's, it's just a great, great group of people run that theater too. Yeah. It has a great, it definitely has a great reputation and energy and everyone I've worked with so far has been really lovely as well. Um, Yeah. I've just, I planned this whole tour myself and have been uh, contacting a million people. I, I, I don't even know. I mean, I really have just researched every city because most of the cities on the tour I've never performed in because I never uh-huh. kind of did that. Like I'll be doing stand up for seven years this summer. And like a lot of people usually are kind of sent out, you know, maybe around your third or fourth year or something you start kind of. And I never did that. So I never maybe like. I'm kind of glad it worked out that way because maybe if I would have come a few years ago, it wouldn't have like been as strong of a show or I wouldn't have like been ready. But I definitely just was targeting venues that, yeah, from my research, like independently owned and and progressive and uh, and just seeing who else they who else like they host, who else is like coming to town and playing there. And you can definitely tell a lot from that for sure yeah yeah and <laughs> like I think, who else is booking yeah I think in Austin you're gonna have Angelina Martin is that right yes uh, yeah, yeah I love her she's I'm she's really wonderful. excited yeah. she's so funny so sweet and like even that's been so that's been like one of the best parts of the tour is like every city I'm going to I'm just Oh, like booking a, a queer like a local queer opener yeah. and so I've gotten to just like, and not even just the people who I've ended up actually asking, but like learning about a lot of different comedians just from different recommendations and like seeing and, um, and that's been probably one of the best parts for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to say you, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's you, or I guess we're going to about to find out, but like yeah. the, pro- the promotion for this tour is like, mm hardcore like it's a marketing machine so is that yeah is that you doing all that that is 100 percent me yeah that's 100 percent me kudos Um, (laughs) yeah no i've uh i've definitely been working my ass off i've never been like i've always worked hard on things but this has been like the hardest i think i have probably ever worked on a project for sure like from top to bottom just like booking like researching every city and all contacting a million venues and booking them and then yeah all the promo and it's yeah. just it's like nonstop. yeah no, um, mad mad respect because i i you. i do my social media promo for yeah. you know our podcast episodes right. this column our showcase yeah. and it's it is so relentless much. and i'm it like it is relentless yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's it's a lot and and um but I'm just like really trying and like really trying to just re and, and I feel like I am just in the first couple of shows that we've been to just like really trying to like reach kind of this, my specific people, I guess, yeah, like who yeah. will be excited by it. But I, I don't know. I'm just like trying everything because there's so many different, you know, like ways that people hear about things. Right. Right. And it's, <laughs> 
uh, you know, yeah, and it, I'm sure it changes from city to city. You might exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and just like trying to get people to just look at it. Yeah. And, and hear about it. And, um, so yeah, it's definitely been, it's definitely been interesting, but it, it does seem like, um, just analyzing sort of the data or whatever it, it seems what's been great is most of the shows, like we don't really have a lot of walk-ups. Like most of the shows have been like 90% pre-sale. So nice. that's kind of cool as well. It's like not necessary. And like walk-ups are great and like, please walk up. I hope that you do, but like, <laughs> but it's nice. Like it seems like more people that are coming are like actually specifically coming to, to see this show. And so yeah. that is exciting to me for sure. Yeah. So logistically, I have to ask, how do you how do you balance the I've, I've got to be this marketing machine, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to be giving it my all for this, right. you know, our performance on stage yeah. and I have to be ready for that. How do right. you how do you balance that? Yeah, it's um, it's definitely challenging. Um, I mean, the the material that I'm doing is like things that are have some of it is things that's evolved from like years ago and a lot of it is like only in the last like year and and it's a hybrid but i i'm very kind of methodical with my time i guess is the only way that i can do it i i really do like struggle with time management like i have pretty severe adhd and and it's difficult for me to like focus and lose track of time and i use like I use like a Pomodoro timer website where I like, okay. it does like 25 minutes on five minutes off, but I like truly break down my day to like, and okay, I'm going to spend two hours this morning posting on everything. And then I'm going to do an hour. Like I'll watch the video from the set that I just did the week before. And then like, I'll, I have like a paper cut and then I have like a long edited video cut and then I'm like always cutting it and switching the order and so I guess the answer is I am completely consumed by it at all times <laughs> that is my secret um to never stop thinking about comedy for even one moment and then I'm able to get most of what I need to get done yeah <laughs> how how do you imagine uh future Kara is going to feel at the end of this tour? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I think I, I hope that I feel like, I mean, I already feel like proud of myself just for like putting it together and like, and the people who've come out have been like so nice and it's just been like a really positive experience thus far. So I hope that I feel like that. And then I also hope that I feel um just really confident in the hour um because the plan is to sort of like end the set in Toronto and record it as an album there and then I have like a month off and then I'll do the final show in LA as like a hometown show or whatever yeah. so I'm hoping that I just feel like really sharp and really like you know and I'm also hoping that some of these shows like the momentum keeps building and some of the shows maybe sell out before the show so I don't have to do as much promotion and I can like I just like see all the work that I have from now until the end and like what I have to do in each city so I'm like I'm just gonna I I see myself like in the fetal position just begging people to like buy a ticket to my Montreal show please I want to stop posting as much as you want me to stop posting I want it more so if you just like get your one friend from college to like spend $15 on this ticket I will post I will stop posting four hours sooner you know that's how I kind of envision it going down <laughs> um realistically yeah just like begging um that's fine you know it's all part of it yeah well I, my my hope for you is that you're actually gonna give yourself time to relax and yes kind of that also yes and... mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah no that's I mean this has been the yeah, that that's definitely a goal. I mean, maybe again, who knows what the future will hold, but you know, maybe it will become like it won't be unethical to visit Hawaii again soon. Maybe, you know, work out a little. But then I'm I'm like such a psycho. I'd probably be like, oh, maybe I could see if I could do like a little show on the Friday night, you know, like it's not okay. <laughs> I need to be sedated and then yeah, I can like, like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't know what'll happen. <laughs>
Well, as we start winding down, is there anything yeah. that we haven't talked about that you want uh, people to know about you? Oh man, I um, I mean, I guess like specifically, I I I guess I would love to touch maybe a little bit more on Austin specifically because it was kind of a very um, a very well, it was like a very specific intentional choice because on this initial tour, at least it's the only city in the South that I'm actually going wow. to. Well, thank and you. yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, please. You're welcome. No, it's <laughs> only, but like, no, it's so, but, um, I had heard so many, I've just heard so many good things about Austin, the city specifically and the comedy scene specifically. And so, I'm just really excited to get there and kind of experience it. I'm sad I won't be able to be there like for a very long time, but yeah. um, but yeah, I'm definitely excited to see. I'm I also am a little nervous. It's like a late show, and I'm like, okay, people are gonna be popping off. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that Austin's a little wild, and then there's a, a little. That's I'm being very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard it's very wild, and also there's just yeah, so. I don't know if that's something to talk about, but I am excited yeah. to, uh, I think that my sort of chaotic unhinged energy will be a good match for the late night Austin comedy scene. I think so. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I, I, I just love that you made that choice for fallout because it is mm -hmm. such a good, good place. Such a good yeah. place. Yeah. Not that other I places also... aren't, aren't good. It's just, it's, mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah, that's, they seem like they have a lot of really fun shows and I like that they have improv and sketch as well. Right. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, but I mean, I guess the only other thing I would want to, you know, know or talk about is if there's other cities that I'm like, that I've made any like egregious errors by not going to them. I know that I, I've heard from a lot of people, Atlanta um, is supposed to be really fantastic. Yeah. Um, do you have any other favorite maybe neighboring scenes that are a bit closer or more in the southwest or uh i know that phoenix has a nice scene um mm -hmm. and houston actually has a nice nice scene there's some uh smaller theaters that that okay um, cool i think are are good so you know you've got mm -hmm. at least those uh we have uh a few years ago, we when COVID ha first happened, we did mm -hmm. the series, long series, painful series, uh, mm -hmm. for the people behind the scenes of online shows. And oh yeah, there was one comic that we fell in love with, who's now in Richmond, Virginia. And, oh okay. Uh, she's starting. You know, she's from there, moved to LA, and then just recently went back, and she's kind of building mm -hmm. up the scene. Um, okay, so cool. Those are some some scenes that I. I know about so you know put those yeah on your, on your radar yeah for sure I mean there's little there's little pockets everywhere I'm I'm definitely I'm almost thinking I I feel bad that I've sort of neglected like large swaths of the Midwest and the <laughs> South on this first go so I think I might have to do just like all South dressed fully as a cowboy and just go to like every little <laughs> little town whether they want me there or not I'm like let's go Alabama here we go you know yeah. like I feel like that would actually be so fun, especially, yeah. yeah, maybe like a late night circuit or something, because I love music and I love good food. So that's yeah. also why Austin was a was an easy pick just selfishly so I could just gorge myself for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, don't don't gorge yourself to where you're comatose on stage, though. <laughs> like I mean, look, we'll I think people would get it. I they think would. people would be very forgiving if I was in yeah. some kind of barbecue <laughs> induced haze on stage. I would have to think yeah. that someone would like throw me a beer and tell me to like, you know, suck it up. Let's go. <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. You know, if I don't get into some kind of showdown with some kind of cowboy, I'm going to be pissed. I need <laughs> something, something to keep me, you know, keep me engaged. There's yeah. got to a line dance to break out. I don't know what's going to, I really don't yeah. know what's going to happen on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's going to be a great time either. Yes. Either way. <laughs> yes, exactly. 
Well, I I want to give you a chance to go into your full promo mode here oh. and uh, you know full transparency <laughs> for anyone listening. We we couldn't decide if this episode is going to come out <laughs> before Kara's show or after right. to include a, a a review of the show so she can use it right. to you know keep promoting. So we right. don't know what your what version you're going to get if you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That's part of the fun. And, and yeah. you and I don't owe anyone anything. So we, we really can don't. make it whatever the hell we want. We could literally just privately record this and have it playing on like a digital photo frame that we just each have in our house for some reason. It's not used anywhere else. It never goes anywhere. It's just in our <laughs> our two homes. It plays when someone comes to the ring doorbell. I don't care. You know what? Live your life, whatever we want to do. <laughs> Um, I can use it to tell my teenager you are yes. gonna like her. Damn it! Yes, you better come. <laughs> they better stand on each other's shoulders and put a beard on and come to the show. Um, but yes, if it is a before promo, I'm very excited. I will be at the Fallout Theater on Saturday, February 26th, with honestly America's sweetheart Angelina Martin. I would absolutely. argue absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so absolutely. funny. Speaking of sassy, 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 funny, funny, funny. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then I'll be heading on over. Then I'm going to be skipping on up to the Midwest and I'll be working my way over from Milwaukee all the way up to Vermont and then up in Canada. So tell your friends. Yeah. <laughs> Vermont. I actually do know somebody that lives in Vermont. So I'll have to tell really? them. Really? Oh, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> Please tell them this is a very like guerrilla marketing DIY, like just me harassing old high school teachers into attending. Like I'm not above it. I am absolutely not above it. So please tell your friend for mine. <laughs> please <laughs> okay all right well i have an official closing question before we okay. uh, get into our our last uh, housekeeping items okay perfect one word to describe your future whoa i mean i'm gonna have to say <laughs> I'm going to have to say sassy 2.0, honestly. I think you knew I was going to have to do that, but I can't really see my future being anything but extremely sassy. And I don't, on it, quite frankly, don't want it to be anything except that. So I'm going to say sassy 2.0, no spaces. So that technically is still one okay. word. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I, Thank I, you. I, yeah. yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> you just like took a fake note. You didn't write anything down. <laughs> I always you know, write it down. Sassy 2.0. That's going to be on a weird post-it your son's going to find. What the hell is this? <laughs> uh, oh I, I love that word choice because I have had a, a best friend since the seventh grade and we oh are always God. calling each other sassy. Yes. And, and we always, the other that is being called sassy says, no, I'm sass free. So yes. Oh my God. You have, you have to. Words. It's one of my Good. favorite words. <laughs> my my best friend and I always call each other bratty. That's another good one oh, we use. That is a good one. That is a yeah. good one. Okay. Well, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham Presents. Kara Connors, tell us where we can find you on social media and get in that one more plug for the tour. All right. Let's do it, baby. Um, I am on Instagram at Kara Cons Comedy. That's with all C's. And you can find out more about me and where I'm going to be next at caraconnors.com slash tickets how was that that was good that was good <laughs> <laughs> well we hope you've enjoyed learning about how Kara got to be the comedic genius that you heard today just as much as <laughs> i have this has been comedy wham presents Kara connors i'm valerie and that's been funny thank you Kara. thank you so much that was so fun <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs>